the, one of the first key items, and it was on your patent, was the hub centre steering. You knew right from the beginning that you were going to have to have a hub centre steering to leave that entry to the duct free. So a lot of our early sketching was, well, how would we do that? What are the clearances around wheel turning, wheel bump? I think, I think whenever, you, whenever you come up with a new invention or a new concept, what you're concerned about are the numbers, you know, and the facts. You know, everybody wants to, you know, you can come up with anything and say it's better than something else. You've got to prove but it. But it's just opinion. Um, so what you're actually after is you're after fact-based data to say that this is an improvement aerodynamically on something else. Mm. And there's nowhere to hide when you're dealing with facts. You know, it either is or it isn't better. Yeah. Um, so when we initially decided to manufacture the high speed demonstrator, which is now the land speed bike, the idea with that was, was that we were going to demonstrate the concept in the most radical form. So no compromise whatsoever. Ideally, break a record. Yeah, There's ideally. your proof right yeah, there. Yeah. That's what we'd like to do. We'd like to break a world record next year. But but the issue is is that as soon as you add forks um, or anything in front of the duct entry, then you're you're restricting the duct entry and reducing the aerodynamic performance. So you've already compromised what is your key attribute, hence the need for yeah. getting rid of the forks. Yeah, absolutely. So that was that was one of the early features um, that we had to design in, and then obviously that comes with its own challenge. Um, and Perhaps the biggest challenge when moving into the uh, into the land speed bike is is the packaging between the wheel centres. Yeah. Um, well, already we had a longer wheelbase for stability, so that helped us. Yeah, yeah. It, there was a longer wheelbase for stability, that's for sure. But essentially, um, you know, there there is a window of wheelbase that you would like to put the motorcycle within. Well, yeah. Ideally, mm -hmm. I wanted to keep the wheelbase more representative of a road going bike rather than a very stretched streamliner type yeah. motorcycle i think that we could have achieved we can achieve high speed stability at the at the length that we're at but essentially what we've done is is the the wheelbase has been extended to a point which has been governed by the energy storage really right so it's the size of the battery which sits between the front and rear wheels which determines the wheelbase. But by going for a semi-streamliner, we're not too far away from a conventional motorcycle. One of your the things you said to me was, I want to have a modern superbike, but with a duck through the middle. So it was, how do we achieve that within those constraints of packaging? Yeah, I think, I think that there are many applications of EV bikes. And one of the problems that we have with the land speed bike is trying to get the energy out of the batteries as quickly as possible. We're trying to exhort, we're trying to take all that potential energy which is in the batteries, get it to the motors as quickly as possible. You know, we only may be running for 90 seconds and we want as much power as we can possibly get. Um, so therefore we need to carry a lot of cells to be able to get the discharge rate to achieve the rear wheel power, the rear wheel kilowatts of energy that we need to drive the motorcycle forwards. If, this, if we could turn this technology into something that was more suitable for the road, yep. then, then the performance would come down. We would, we would probably sensibly probably be running around 100 kilowatts, and then we can probably reduce the battery significantly, which would bring the wheelbase in, and then would, would look more conventional to a modern superbike. At the same time, when we first discussed this, you said you didn't want a, it didn't need to be conventional. It was a bike from the future, which was appropriate for such a radical technology in there. What were the first things you, when you came with the patent and said, I've got a duct on two wheels, what were your challenges to me to say, oh, I want to make it look better, but obviously not hurt the core concept of the aerodynamics? Yeah, I think for me, the outside form is, 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 is difficult to achieve. I think from an aesthetic point of view, a large, gaping, open, wide, orifice at the front of a motorcycle is a very uncomfortable thing. If the motorcycle's got a face, it's suddenly got a big mouth, hasn't it? Yeah, and I, mean, it's... I think we spent a lot of evenings at your place, you know, 
discussing how to solve the problem of the front of this bike and, and many of the drawings that we made were pretty uncomfortable looking ugly things. For me that was the challenge you've almost got to go through that process of drawing ugly kids and, and refining them before yeah. you get hang on we've got something going here and we tried a number of different rear ducts front ducts different styling features but at the same time we have to keep the functionality of both the entrance and the exit of the Venturi and it makes for a pretty odd looking bike nevertheless I think we were getting somewhere to we want some conventionality to sell the concept yeah. but at the same time it's got to have that functionality the hub center steering the duck all the way ducked all the way through um, I think for me what was what was what was absolutely important from the start is that you know, I think one of the things I said right from the start is through squinted eyes, through squinted eyes, this has to look like a superbike. Even though it's a land speed motorcycle, yep. you know, and and uh, historically things turn into giant teardrops. They're, they're not that aesthetically pleasing. They're there solely to, mm. to meet the challenge of going as fast as possible. But, but what I wanted to do was reduce the drag um, create uh, um, and, and um, engineering the functionality of the challenge that we were taking on, but through squinted eyes to try and have this thing look like a superbike. It's a radical superbike, yep. but 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 the point the point being is that it is not that many steps away from something that could be used on the road. No, exactly. So we can take your patented technology and apply it to other vehicles, not just a land speed record bike. It could be anything that will benefit from the efficiencies of the duct. 